The idea came to me um, from a casual conversation with a friend, actually, over lunch. Um, he happens to be the last member left of his own family. Um, he has been to the funerals of his mother, his father, his brother, his sister. And at this particular lunch, he was telling me some anecdotes. I think the germ of my phantoms was an image I had in my mind of my own mother as it happens, or a rather different character from one in the book, but my own mother when she used to scrunch her hair with mousse, which is what people did in the 80s. The gap between the public figure and the private man, between the father of six and the secret erotic dreams of a homosexual man. And the structure only came into place once I found the contemporary narrator and he didn't arrive until, um, until something happened just in my life when my father was um, having some knee surgery and I had to, and he was convalescing and needed some help. So I went back to the family home um, to kind of lend my mum and dad a hand. And just being back there in your kind of the place where you grow up, it kind of, it's, it brings up lots of, well, it brings up the past, I guess. It brings up your own child and your own adolescence. I feared the sea so long for, for half of my life. I didn't learn to swim until I was in my 30s. I swim in the sea every day. I've just come from swimming in the sea now. Uh, Baudelaire spoke of swimming in the sea as being like being kissed a thousand times a minute. Um, so the sense of that otherness, absolute otherness, which I can achieve, you know, I just cycle from the suburbia and within, you know, 15 minutes, I'm in another world. Um, they couldn't be, could they, is there a better subject to write about? Uh, I just kind of felt that a lot of the ideas I was thinking about, I wanted to find a way to express them, and I couldn't really see... Um, I couldn't really see, I think, the book that I wanted to see, um, the, the sort of ideas that I wanted to uh, pull together. I didn't see them all in one place. I don't know where stories come from. If we knew where stories came from, I suppose we'd we'd go back there and be able to to source them and find that place and direct ourselves when we don't know what we're doing. People, Debbie nov novelists, they always say, oh, I wanted to write the book that I wanted to read myself. And I always think, oh my God, I do not write the books that I want to read. I don't want to read them and I don't want anyone else to read them. So I'm in a muddle about that. I so love my readers, but just as long as they're strangers. And with each novel, some things get easier and then like technically some, I suppose some craft elements might get, get, you know, you know how to work your way around kind of a scene a bit more, but some things as, as, as you become aware of just how, um, how hard it is to just write something that feels, that feels fresh and feels original. I think I've been really interested and um, particularly in the last few years of the question whether language can be neutral or not and the ways that we use language to to sometimes tell stories and build understanding but other times to erase or to distort. Spending your life um, making up stories about people who didn't actually exist is a pretty perverse way uh, to pass the time so I, um, I think you'd have to be either a little uh, crazy or certainly very, very passionate about the activity. I mean, I think both probably apply, apply in my case. I mean, I sit down and do it most days and I have done since 1997. So, <laughs> so there's something in it, isn't there? Well, I think I was, thinking, I was thinking about it for 10 years and I wrote it in two. And I, I wrote it during lockdown and COVID. I had four chapters written and then I got cancer and um, had big, big, heavy duty chemo for um, six, six months really. And so I lost all this time. And then I realized that if, if the cancer came back and if I had to go, go through another six months of chemo, really, <laughs> that I'll, you know, the chance of writing a book would be zero. So I, once I could, once I really could start working again, I worked very hard and very fast. The idea of obsessing about things, pursue you have if you're a right any writer is obsessive. They have to be, you know, um, just to to make it to the end, really. Because the trouble is you make it to the end and you just want to start all over again. Mm -hmm.